Hi, my name is Alex Hearn. I'm a marine biologist. Um, I work at the Universidad San Francisco de Quito and at the Galapagos Science Center, obviously in the Galapagos Islands in Ecuador. I'm also part of a network called Migramar. And we try to understand uh, the movement patterns of sharks and turtles and other migratory marine species in this region so that we can better protect them. Now, Galapagos is obviously known by everyone because of its importance for evolution, but really underwater is the most spectacular world you can imagine. Um, it's quite common in the island of Darwin to be surrounded by maybe five or different six, six different species of sharks, whale sharks, hammerhead sharks, silky sharks. It really is fantastic. And over the last 20 years, my team and I have been trying to understand how much Galapagos really contributes to their conservation because these animals are migratory. So how much time do they really spend there? Where do they go? So we've done a lot of tagging work. So we place electronic tags on the animals and these allow us to track them uh, where they go. But over this time, we've also realized that these sharks are in danger. And in fact, the hammerhead shark, which is the logo of the, of the uh, Galapagos Marine Reserve, used to be near threatened back in 1998 when the Marine Reserve was created. It's now critically endangered. So we're working towards trying to increase protection for many of these species. And one of the key aspects of increasing protection is to bring awareness into the homes of people that might not necessarily interact with them, but also to engage people who do interact with them and so that they can see them from a different light. And today I'd like to talk um, with you about two different projects that we have. The first one really engages dive guides in Galapagos and tourists in Galapagos. It's an app called Shark Count. It's free download. And what it allows us to do, any user, um, after their dive, they can log what they saw, whether sharks, turtles, and how many they saw. And this allows us over time to build up a baseline of what these populations are doing at the moment, at the particular times of year, that they're in different places, uh, what's their distribution in Galapagos. And with that, we can track them over time and understand how their abundance and distribution is changing. Um, and in fact, we're really excited because we're about to launch Shark Count for Cocos Island, for Revillagigedo Islands, and for mainland Ecuador. So we're gonna have shark count modules throughout the Eastern Tropical Pacific. The other project um, that, that's really exciting um, is the story of Marty the Hammerhead. And this came about um, because one day we were working in a bay on the island of San Cristobal and almost by accident, we caught a baby hammerhead. And really up until then, we didn't know that hammerheads were pupping in the islands. We thought they mostly migrated to mainland, but clearly some of them do pup in the Galapagos Islands. And so we thought, why not build a story around um, Marty the hammerhead around this this hammerhead that we caught showing the life stages of the hammerhead and their migratory routes and get that story into classrooms so that, that that's where Marty comes from and Marty was launched about a year and a half ago it was um, a project in collaboration with the Galapagos Conservation Trust and it comes with a, a whole set of materials that are free to use in English and Spanish and uh, we're really excited. We've been using it in Galapagos now for, for about a year. And our next step is to bring that to homes along the coast of Ecuador where sharks are still being landed, uh, ostensibly as bycatch, but, you know, hundreds of thousands of sharks each year, um, and also in Costa Rica, so that we can build support for the conservation actions that we need to take to really protect these species moving into the future.